Hey, so we decided to go to this winery, Winridge Vineyards, in Maryland. It's in the Washington, D.C., uh, Northern Virginia region. And uh, this is uh, on a uh, Saturday in the afternoon. I think we were rolling up around uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the weather was, like, awesome and perfect. And, uh, you know, we, we've never been to this uh, vineyard before. Our friend who was in the car with us that we were riding up here with uh, um, recommended it, and she's been to the vineyard before. So... Uh, you know, I, we have a little bit of experience of going to vineyards in Pennsylvania. This will be the first vineyard that we've actually gone to in Maryland. So this is apparently a um, like a brand new vineyard. Um, they just kind of opened up for business a couple months ago. So I don't know how long they've been making wines. Um, I don't know any of the history on this vineyard. Uh, I don't know the history about the people that have this vineyard or anything. Um, but I, I do know that, like, this is in the Washington, D.C. area, and, you know, I was walking around with a camera some, and people were kind of, like, looking at me weird, and you could hear in the background people talking about, like, me with a camera. So, you know, definitely people were not kind of crazy about me having the camera out, so, you know, I only rolled some footage in some different spots. I didn't, you know, do any, uh, like, vlogging, um, talking to the camera or anything while I was here. It has this really um, kind of cool atmosphere. All these tables and chairs and picnic tables and balloons, like, they're all out, all out there already set up, uh, ready to go, and a lot of people are super friendly, like those people there were just uh, super crazy about my dog, and uh, they were just, you know, kind of playing with the dog while I was like pulling stuff out of the car and um, getting my early footage going and everything to just kind of get an um, overlay of what was going on, and uh, this is like right when we got here, so it wasn't very busy, but as the day progressed, hour by hour it got more and more busy and uh, they were just fanatical about uh, the corgi obviously so the cool thing was um, you know you'd see kids play and and people just kinda um, meet with each other and, and uh, see each other and uh, kinda just people that didn't know each other were just kinda being friendly and stuff So this is another corgi that was out there uh, with us, and uh, this was uh, like right after Grace uh, got done like kind of playing with her, so they're both kind of worn out. Um, I didn't have my camera ro rolling when they were playing, unfortunately, um, but uh, it was like su a super, super dog-friendly environment. People, uh, you know, had their dogs, and all the dogs seemed pretty respectful of each other and respectful of kids, and people were running around and wanting to meet the dogs and play with the dogs, so... You know, if you have a dog and you're trying to figure out somewhere you can go in uh, Maryland um, that has this kind of like nice and uh, and friendly feel to it, um, this vineyard is definitely um, the place to go. And you can, you know, obviously can drink while you're with your dog, so that's like, you know, the bonus too. And, uh, you know, they've been just getting so much attention and, and playing with um, so many people. Um, at this point, I mean, the dogs are just kind of chilling out. Um, but. You know, as dog owners know, I mean, usually dogs, like especially younger dogs, um, are pretty crazy with playing. And uh, you know, here we go. You can see that they're uh, they're just worn out. So um, it seemed like a, a great day. So this is a food truck, cheese on wheels. The food truck was actually amazing, and uh, it was actually kind of funny because like. This whole vineyard's like solar powered. You'll see the solar rays over there, and you'll see them later on in the video. Um, yet they have this like kind of like super noisy food truck just sitting there uh, right next to them. But I mean, if you ignored the the generator, um, the food coming out of the truck was actually really really amazing um, for grilled cheese. And you'll see some pictures of the grilled cheese uh, just like right after this. So you can see like it has like the arugula or spinach, um, depending on what you ordered. And it just tasted amazing, mm -hmm. and it just seemed like it was like perfect with the wine. It looks fantastic. So this is the wine tasting that we did. It was twelve dollars a person, so we have four glasses there. So that's basically um, fifty dollars on wine tasting. The amount of wine that we got, you'll see like her um, pour it. Um, it that was actually a really generous pour. Um, but uh, you know, it just seemed like you, you know you're paying twelve dollars for basically less than uh, you know a glass of wine what would be a normal glass of wine so it just it felt kind of expensive um, but you're hearing this from the person that, that has been wine testing in, in uh, Pennsylvania 
and Pennsylvania, the places that we've gone, the uh, flights were free. So I'm not used to having to, to pay, you know, let alone pay 50, like basically 50 bucks for two people, or for four people, um, just to taste some wine. Um, but I do know, you know, Virginia and Maryland, they, I mean, they have probably some weird wine lines plus two. Um, you know, we're from Virginia, so we have, like, um, laws basically every time they pour. So they went from um, what seemed like their sweetest wine to the most bitter wine. And, uh, you know, I'd like, I don't want to be too negative. The environment, uh, you know, it seemed like a 9 or a 10. I mean, it was a very, very nice environment. The bathrooms were, like, immaculate and amazing, like hardwood floors, um, porcelain um, toilets. Like, a really, it was really, really spot on. It wasn't like a porta pot or any kind of, you know, real kind of poor th thing. The food truck, um, the food coming out of the truck was amazing. It, the generator was kind of loud um, if you stood right next to it. But if you stepped away from it, it wasn't so bad. So as for the wine itself... Um, I'm not like the the person that likes like the wine is his favorite liquor or whatever. I do drink wine, and lately I've been drinking a lot um, a lot of wine more frequently than uh, than hard liquor and stuff. Um, but there are definitely wines out there that I, that I don't like, just mainly because I like the sweeter and the lighter wines. I, and I will drink red wine sometimes, but once again, it's like the lighter and the sweeter red wines. And uh, I went through this whole flight, and. Uh, it just seemed like I never really could find, like, the one that was, like, perfect for me. Um, other people, you know, they probably found ones that they like better, but for me, I didn't find any other wines, like, really, like, a, like a preference where I'd want to come back here and say, I, I want to come back for this specific bottle. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering what happened to our flight, because we went through uh, just two glasses, and now she's doing, like, all this, like, kind of other stuff. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way too. I was like, well, what happened? We paid like $50 and now like you're starting to pour wine for somebody else like standing next to us, even though there's like, you know, six or seven bartenders and, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you just kind of like forgot that we existed. You know, so I just started uh, kind of shooting some footage of the, um, the other areas and stuff, just kind of let you see, uh, you know, what's going on stuff out there. And this place did get a lot more packed and a lot more busy. This is the inside of their gazebo area, and you can see everybody has dogs. Supposedly, um, they are going to be building a building at some point, so they can do like wine tasting in the winter time. Also, I, you know, I, I don't know um, if this place would really draw me back to, to for just um, coming back to for the building to taste the wine. The other thing, kind of um, unusual is this place is 100% solar. They have big signs talking about how they're proud of um, being um, a pure, you know, green, um, pure solar entity. And I guess that's why they didn't offer to let that truck plug into um, the, the facilities because maybe they didn't have enough energy to, to allow the truck to plug in. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, but they did have a lot of solar arrays and uh, they had a really big sign um, talking about their, uh, their solar. Yeah, like, so, like, two minutes go by, three minutes go by, or I'm st it's still like, well, where's the wine, where's the wine, and none of us bothered with, like, trying to, um, interrupt her, I mean, and this isn't all the bartenders they have, they have some other bartenders on the side that are serving, too, um, but it did kind of get a little bit frustrating, to me, at least, of thinking, you know, well, you know, we paid $50 for a wine flight, and, I, you know, I'm used to, to just having, like, the whole flight in a row, when I go to other vineyards and not sort of being like lost in the confusion. And that bottle in her hand right there is actually the very next bottle that uh, I think was in our flight. The one that she just started pouring for other people. It's like she like finally like looks at us and is like, oh, you guys are still here. Why haven't you left? Oh, that's right. I need to pour you some more wines. Um, the other thing, you know, like, and th that's pretty negative. Um, I don't want to be too negative. And I mean, like I said, this is a brand new vineyard. I'm sure that all this is going to get ironed out, and I'm sure that they'll um, probably get the process down a lot better. Um, but the other oddity is, you know, when we got done with this, you know, the, you can hear them ask me, well, which one do you want? You know, because the whole plan was I was going to hang out here with everybody and drink, like, a bottle of wine. And I ended up drinking a bottle of wine. Um, but it was like, well, which one do you want? And it's like I couldn't even, like, figure out which one I wanted because there wasn't really... Um, any of them that really, after drinking all these different flights, that I felt was like really super desirable. So it was like, let me figure out well, which one is like the the one that I, um, you know, hate the least. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want that to sound like the wrong way. That sounds really, really hateful. Um, which one do I hate the least is like like really the, the question. Um, and then the other oddity is when we did get our bottle that we were going to um, drink, 
and I guess this can happen to anybody, but uh, I've never seen it happen before. Um, I've never seen it happen before, like at a vineyard with a vineyard employee. But uh, she broke the cork off uh, trying to get the bottle, like, open. And, you know, I've seen, like, people do that at home before when they, like, didn't know how to, like, pull the cork out of a bottle. Um, but I've never actually seen, like, a vineyard employee at a vineyard break the cork off one of their own bottles, like, at the vineyard. Like, I've, I'm sure it happens. I, it just, for me, it's like I've... Uh, I've never seen that, and I thought that was like really, really, really un unusual. So I thought maybe this lady was just super um, inexperienced at uh, doing this stuff. But um, like I said, they've only been open for a couple months, and uh, they're just getting started. You know, so you have to give them all the um, the space and all the room in the world to to get better. Um, but th like I said, the, the the atmosphere and the environment was like a nine or a ten. It was very high. The um, the grilled cheese was like amazing. The, the wine, to me, it was, like, okay. It wasn't, like, rank or anything like that. Um, but it, it was, by far wasn't, like... I'm not going to drive back to Maryland to that vineyard to, to get a bottle of wine um, when I can go to um, some of the other vineyards that, that has wine, even, like, the grocery store that has wine that I, I prefer more than, uh, than what they offer, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, I would probably give up the quality of the wine a little bit for um, the awesome environment that they have and being able to hang out with friends and stuff uh, at the vineyard. So I believe this is the last uh, uh, tasting that we're going to be doing. Like I was saying, it went from um, sweet to bitter. And uh, the, the wine flight was static. Um, basically, you almost always, it appeared to get the same ones um, that, you, that you could pick from. And they only had, like, I think, eight wines to pick from. And I, maybe it's a lot for the area, but um, like the one of the vineyards we go to, Shade Mountain, they've got like 30 or 40 different wines to pick from. And literally, they give you a marker, and you just like mark off all the ones that you want to taste. And you can mark like up to five of them. So you have like a very, very broad selection to pick from, and then everybody gets like a custom flight. Um, where here, it would just seem like um, they just had a kind of standardized, um, you know, sweet to bitter, and you get their four, four of their eight wines to taste. So there's actual menu there that you get to pick from. When I look at it a little bit closer, yeah, it's it's uh, six traditional wines, and it looks like two sparkling wines. One of them is a sparkling red, and the other one is a sparkling white. And uh, the sweetest one they had was a um, Riesling, and then the uh, next sweetest one was a, uh, a rose. So um, that was our wine tasting. Oh, I don't care. I don't know why people throw gang symbols because I don't know what they are. So I'm just gonna be like... Oh, we have to actually get the light, like the lighting right. Now you can throw gang symbols. All right. See you. See you.